thing is, 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 uh, don't let go of it. Finguistics is a wordplay application that we put together with Infusion, a surface development partner, and Research Machines, an educational partner within the UK. The application is designed to work for uh, younger children from the ages 5 up to about the ages of 15. And we have the capability to either spell short words, uh, to build sentences uh, across the languages English, Spanish and French, or to play maths puzzle games at varying levels. We've got the touch, multi-touch, multi-user and the object recognition. And we kind of looked at those and how they actually fitted in with the applications that we were discussing. Some of them when we looked at it in further, we thought, well, actually, there was no reason this wouldn't be something better that was displayed on a screen, um, potentially even maybe with um, Windows 7 when that comes out. But some of them really were very much around collaboration, um, which is really important in education, and also the need for touch, multi-touch, or doing away with a kind of traditional keyboard and mouse. For a Surface project, we used loads of different kinds of media, um, mainly because, unlike a regular screen project, we've got orientation to worry about. So we, we started off on a whiteboard, which is where we start with everything and just sketched ideas out. Um, for prototyping and wireframing, we then moved on to, um, to Visio diagrams and PowerPoint templates and things. And then actually, we actually sat down and cut out bits of paper and yeah. stuck our own kind of surface-esque piece of paper and, and moved things around with our fingers just to make sure we figured things like orientation out properly. Um, and from then, that's when we actually started working with actually prototyping and the design tools. Um, it's more important to get interaction right in a physical space before you start to bring that in a virtual space. And certainly having a surface unit as soon as possible is very important as well to actually try some of the ideas out on a physical device. The power of using um, a WPF means that uh, the, the des developers can just sit there and actually write code and, and make, make basic wireframes based on the designs we've given them. Then we can actually go into Blend ourselves and worry about how it all actually looks and how it fits together and that kind of thing. So it certainly separates the two workflows and then we can just just check in and get the latest version, suddenly the things we've made just, just work. I was sort of expecting um, there'd be quite a lot of things to learn, but really it just it's a very natural extension of WPF. So instead of working with mouse events, you're typically working with contact events. But other than that, you're still doing captures, you're still doing basically the same things with touch as, you, as you're doing with mouse. Mm. Uh, I'd say the skills transfer over really quickly and you're up to speed very quickly. One of the main differences is really the type of application you build is very different to WPF because you tend to build an application that's got text boxes and it's got, a, it's got a strict orientation whereas on the surface everything's 360 degrees you can work it from any side. Yeah it's all blend of Visual Studio just like normal WPF and um, basically when you run, run an a, a surface application it comes up in the um, in the emulator. Here we've got like the, the surface emulator mm -hmm. and you see how my mouse is a finger that comes with the SDK. I've actually got two mice here so I can work two fingers on the screen and I can resize things and twizzle them around. That's very awkward, it's a lot easier on the surface but it's very good for testing bits of code so you don't really need the full experience some of the time but you could never develop an application without actually having the surface. I think it'd be really difficult. So I spend most half my time in Blend, half my time in Visual Studio. Okay. So you do the, all the kind of design aspects in Blend, doing your storyboards, building the basic structure of the control, mm. and doing the behind the scenes plumbing into the rest of the game via Visual Studio. In the normal world you have things like mouse overs and mouse clicks, whereas in Surface there's no kind of concept of mouse over or hover, so everything's on contacts. Obviously the big one is orientation, you've suddenly got the kind of you used to have a single orientation on the monitor with your up and down, but that's, that's completely gone on the surface device, obviously, because people can step around any, any side of the table. It's, it's, it's not as easy as you may think. I, I run my simulator upside down when I'm testing stuff to make sure that, um, that what I'm designing will actually work from a different orientation, but you can't check the sides and that kind of thing. Um, and when you're designing on a screen, you always still find yourself designing with an up and a down, which for a text-based game like we're using just doesn't make much sense at all. So as soon as you can get onto um, a physical device the better, or, or even putting your monitor flat and turning it around and seeing what you can do if you're using a laptop, that kind of thing. For this project we've been using uh, ADO.NET data services to do uh, some of the data transfer in addition with regular WCF services. It's been a good opportunity to, to tie those things together and get, get a grip for using Entity Framework and uh, Astoria as was. Not every technology is for every, every use case, but th there are a lot of cases where I can see them being used and it's, it's really good to, to understand the product so that we can actually make use of it when, when those things do come up. My main task has been the, the admin console, um, which is used to remote control from 
sort of the, the teacher's point of view. Uh, they can change games, they can view what's going on, they can put games in the queue. For the, the admin point of view, from actually controlling the game, uh, we've got a WCF service endpoint running inside the service app that we talk to. Uh, and as far as data management goes, we're using AD.NET data services to expose all the various entities that we, that we write to. The code talks to the, the main window for the service app and tells it to render to a, a render target, which then gets turned into a highly compressed JPEG and then transferred down the wire via uh, WCF. So we've got a timer in the background at the moment, so this is connected to my simulator. So if we throw that over there, you'll see that that's thrown over there. A particular interest to me on this uh, project is the, the physics engine. So the designers very early on wanted to make sure that the, the spelling tiles were physical objects, were real objects, so that they would bounce off each other, they would bounce off the walls. And this is a test app I used to uh, test some of the code that we generated for our, our physics engine. So we've taken a very surface style of approach in putting together a, a reusable um, layout control, very similar to the scatter view that we have in, in photos, for example, but actually extended that in a way that makes the objects have a physical presence and actually uh, impact on each other. Um, so this, this control allows me to add objects to it, um, and I've added a bunch of um, 3D objects in this case um, that can interact with each other in 2D. So I've just scattered these out randomly on the table, but as you can see, I can pick these up and I can knock them into each other. And they will move around in a, in a pretty realistic way. In the middle of the game here, we've got this thing we call a timer control. And depending on where you're stood, you can't quite, it might be hard to read the numbers that tick down on it. So what we've actually got is we've got this so you can actually spin it round and see from your orientation what's going on. We've also got these, these um, user controls or, or avatars um, which are activated through using these cards. Um, it's important to remember that one of the best things about Surface is that you can actually do this um, optical recognition stuff over regular multi-touch platforms. So um, we've got Jacob here and say I want to move Jacob, I can just stamp him down over here or stamp him over there. It doesn't really matter where he is, I can still rotate him and things. So we'll just, we'll just drop Emily on as well to make sure there's another, another user. So now we start the game by touching this big central button here. And you see that this, the stimulus control, which is telling us what to actually do, is, is facing the wrong, wrong way for people at the end of the screen, so they can turn it around. And if they can't read it, they can make it a bit larger, that kind okay. of thing. Um, one of the important things about Surface is to give feedback straight away as soon as you do something, so it isn't like it's, it's lagging or waiting for things to happen, which is why when you t put things like your avatars down, they immediately snap to the right place, or, um, or you can move these things straight away. The other thing is we have we wanted to give proper feedback when we actually touch something. So if you touch something correctly, or, or in this case incorrectly, it gives you this kind of like instant feedback when you touch it, or if you touch the right one, which is going to be an example of how on my maths is, um, you see again you get direct feedback there. Um, we wanted to, to kind of carry some, some metaphors over um, from the real world to this as well, so these tiles have actual physics properties to them, so you can bash into them and knock them around the screen and that kind of thing. Um, Audible feedback is important because you can't use as many message boxes that you would do in a regular application. Um, Another example of using physical objects is the teacher's card. Um, this is like, the teacher's got like a special console that they can change game settings with, so if it's too easy, they can make it hard, or if they want to change language. Um, so you just drop this on, and you get these cards spilling out. And again, this can all be rotated, so if the teacher drops it on the other side of the screen, they can, they can move it around. Right. Remotely, the teacher can see what's, what's going on um, to cover, like you say, multiple devices. Um, when we're working with the foreign languages, it's also important to show that, and we just threw a little, little flag in the corner here. Keeping the UI simple as well is very important, so we've only got, we had one button to start the game, we've got one place where everything's actually happening, the main kind of control stuff. Um, very obvious what the buttons on here do, um, and again, instant feedback whenever you touch something, all this lagging around thinking about stuff. So there's a big shake-up in, in schools coming through the Building Schools for Future project at the moment, which looks to either rebuild or certainly remodel every secondary school and possibly every primary school within England over the next 10, 15 years. At the heart of that is the ICT. So Surface potentially has huge options there where we are designing schools around learning environments. So as I mentioned earlier, talking about collaboration being important in education, some of the BSF we are looking at, we are building collaborative spaces in them. And you know, you, you could envisage that actually Surface would fit nicely into those spaces and actually we could then build whole learning experiences around collaborative work on a Surface device. So that's really exciting um, and has, again, you know, huge potential. Right, they're giving you a, if you press the, that will help you, it'll give you one. Right, Six. Six. No. Nine. 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 Nine